Hey everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner and I have a very special guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your secret identity to the masses? Yes, I am Jessica G, also known as Jessica G. George, infamous wife to uh, famous Grant George. (laughs) Well, we talked about you quite a bit yesterday. Oh, you did? Yes, it was all positive, I promise. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) he knows better. I well, I I could tell. I was really worried because you know during the break we had to tie him up to a chair so he didn't go anywhere. So I was hoping you wouldn't complain about any rope burns he might have had. If if that was None. a problem, blame blame, blame Chris. <laughs> I totally didn't do that. Yeah, I saw a couple of burns, but it's <laughs> fine. It's nothing worse than what I usually give him. <laughs> That's funny. Cracking the whip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no, for the listeners out there, this is your first time on the show, and one of our very basic and, I guess, traditional questions at this time is how you initially got into acting. Like, how did the bug bite you? You know, good question. I have been doing this since I was 15, officially, but really since I was four. Um, cool, Really cool story goes along with it. My godfather was a an animation guy and also a TV guy. And he was, um, he, his name was Hal Smith and he did, he, he played Andy, he played on the Andy group of the show as the, um, as the drunk that slept in the jail. I don't know how many people remember that, but really cool guy. And on Saturdays I would go to work with my dad and Sundays, my dad had this old soda fountain in his store and Hal would always be there and he would do these cartoon voices for me. And for the longest time, I thought that's what a cartoon was. It was amazing. So um, I was able to kind of learn what he did, but it was almost like he was my earth angel, so to speak, because I never wanted to do anything but be on the radio or be on TV or do voices. Oh, that's really cool that you had somebody to look up to, because not a lot of people have that. They kind of trip into acting. (laughs) Yeah, and that's true. And I'll tell you, just on a side note, he actually said to my parents, don't ever have her get involved in this. It's it's too much of a man's world. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not really into that. But I mean, (laughs) when I think of older stuff, you know, like like you mentioned, I think of like I Love Lucy, for example. You know, because yeah. because I was thinking of that that era, I guess era, I guess um, I'm 22, so you no, know. but you're. I mean, that was the 40s, but 40s into the 50s. But you're you're right. This was a this was the 60s, and when um, you know when Opie was a little boy and grew up to be Ron Howard. So you know, it's it it's a, it was an amazing little show. He was a great actor. He taught me so much, and I I really really loved watching him. And my parents knew that didn't mean anything to me. I was just gonna. I think he was just out for my best interest, but little did he know. Well, so did you try to mimic voices when you were young, or did you take acting classes, or what happened next? I got in so much trouble in school because I was the class clown. And the reason why is because I would mimic everybody. And um, my mom was a teacher at school, so that didn't help. That oh, didn't no. Help. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mimicked everybody, and I could always, always do an English accent. My parents, we traveled a lot, so I got to see a lot of different cultures, and I would always, always, always try to pretend like I was a native. Everywhere I went, I still do. Isn't that crazy? I still do it. So, um, and I, I love just picking up voices and I'll sit there and be talking to myself and listen. I also put voices into inanimate objects. <laughs> that's, a, that's a favorite pastime with my husband. Well, I think so. everybody does, especially if they have pets, they give their pet a voice. I think everybody does that. So objects that don't move, I think is kind of the equivalent. I think that works. <laughs> oh yeah. We'll have full conversations with pigeons sitting in front of us, <laughs> but you know, we, we like to make fun of, of people, you know, that's our, that's our comedy, but just in a nice way, of course. It's, it's like helpful practice. It's not yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> exactly. So yes, I did take acting lessons and I studied um, I studied in LA, I studied in New York City, I studied in Washington DC. And then I came back to LA and I studied more. So I always took voiceover lessons and as a matter of fact, I still do. So I take right now I'm I'm studying with a world famous casting director from Disney and um, I do lessons with her once a week. Well, for all the listeners out there who are interested in voice acting, because I know a lot of you listen, remember, take classes. Number one advice from almost everybody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because I think a lot of people just think, well, you know, I've got this set up and I could go in my closet and I've got, you know, I know how to mix. And that's fine. But you really have to know how to act. It, it, it's not as easy as it looks. You really, really have to know how to get behind the character. And you even you said, you know, you're your dog. And that's one of the characters that I first knew I could get behind that character and be this kind of dopey dog that I had. And um, I just knew, like, once you cross that line, you, you really feel like I can jump into as many characters as possible. And it just having working in front of people and being in the studio with people who do it every single day, helping you is amazing. And, and that's the way it should go always. Well, it's kind of interesting you mentioned that because there's a lot of people nowadays who are like, I can do it because I have a mic hook up to my computer and that's all I need. Um, and it's not that simple from what we've heard. Uh, we've done quite a lot of these interviews. And when I initially got into this, I was 16, I think. Wow. And I was like, I'm going to be an anime voice actor because I thought that was smart, right? Aww. Uh, <laughs> I like that voice. <laughs> But I don't actually, I, I never pursued it because the more I learned about it, the more not only did I love this more, but I just didn't have the ambition to go after all the classes and to move to the right location. And, you know, I, I just didn't feel like I had enough training for it. And I'm not saying that people out there can't get the training for it. I'm just saying that I think some people should reevaluate before, yes, I will be an anime voice actor and that's all I will do. Yeah, or you could be do cosplay, but <laughs> but you know it's it's really important, and I think I think there's the the industry's totally changed so that I, sometimes I'm working. I just did um, a slot machine, and I worked out of uh, North Carolina, and so I can I can do that stuff and be anywhere in the world. And Grant and I were in New York last year, and we were working right out of our the the place that we rented and we were we were still doing voices so i think that's helped but you still it's the same people getting the work over and over and over again and i think that's because they take it really seriously it's like our life you know this is what we do and it also crosses into the line of who we are and the interesting thing too is i think you're seeing more fan involvement with what you guys are doing like you're seeing fans react to specific voice actors too which is something but kind of before the internet you really didn't see <laughs> which is really cool i like i like fans i really do <laughs> i need more hello um but i do because i like to hear what they say and and they're so nice and supportive and just to hear that we're doing a good job well, I know personally speaking, I don't take any of that for granted. No, I, I just get back on on the internet with them and write them back and just ha try to have some kind of personal connection. So I'm I'm so appreciative. Well, it seems like so many fans, especially if you break them up, are really passionate. Anime fans and video game fans specifically, they're very, very into what's going on. And sometimes it can be negative, but more, more likely than not, it's, it's very positive and it's like a fiery burning heart. It's, it's really crazy how people can get <laughs> I totally love it because it's like a, this extra community, you know, like in my, when I was growing up, you were either punk or you were goth or, you know, you, you were something you could like fit into some kind of group. But here we are with the Internet and you can find a community in being a gamer or, you know, following anime. And and oftentimes the fan most of the time, I shouldn't say oftentimes, most of the times the fans know way more than we do as actors because we don't get the whole script. So. Yeah, that, that's one of the interesting things when we have people that want us to ask, like, what did you think of this game? How far did you get? Did you play it? And it's like, I'm pretty sure I could answer that for you and that they don't play it. <laughs> 
Yeah. And the funny thing is that a lot of times when we're on panels and, you know, I've been known to do this, I've had to look over to Grant and say, what show are they talking about? And I don't because they're talking about something that happened in the episode that I may or may not have seen. I try to see stuff, but, you know, I just don't always know what they're talking about. I can follow the storyline, but, um, you know, I wish I was sitting on top of it. But that happens to all of us. Well, I think after doing so many, it's just natural that you wouldn't remember every single detail. Like, I tell people that even though we've been doing this for three years, there are some people where I see their name and I'm like, did we interview them? I can't Aww. remember. <laughs> like, it, they it, did, I hope you don't think about that about me afterwards. <laughs> I got to do something to make an impression. Uh, there's but, no way I'll forget. I promise. You know, the difference is also that we are not doing it in a theater style anymore where there was mics all around and all the actors you know, like we do. We do um, primetime animation, which I do a lot of. And we're all in there together. So we're reading the script from front to back. We table read it and then we go in and we do the whole thing. I sort of like that. You know, I wish that we could do this with with any kind of gaming and anime. But the lines are incredible. There's so many lines per script. So you can't. Yeah. And when you have everyone together, I feel there's a little bit more chemistry, but it seems like I, I don't actually understand why video games haven't done this yet, because there's nothing really stopping most video games unless it's coming from uh, maybe Japan or something. Anime, I understand why they would take you one at a time because of the lip flaps. But I don't know. It just seems weird that video games hasn't jumped on that bandwagon. You know why? Because we're doing one line three, four, five times and, you know, on on average. And so they're working you on each line, especially some of the work that I do, because I do some of the heavier voices and the really guttural stuff and the, the gut wrenching things with the characters that I do. So, you know, a lot of that isn't just a natural, high pitched, easy to lock into voice. And, you know, it's it's something that that they've got to work on. And so you get the directors that really want it a certain way and they have it in their head and they know exactly what the other person sounds like. So they know how to direct you. Well, I remember Grant mentioning you were some terrifying voices in Diablo 3. So I'm going to assume roles like that. Yeah, there you go. Um, I, what makes me really different in this whole world is that I don't have a high, <laughs> you can tell, but I don't have a high pitched voice. That's been good and not so good. Um, because everything sort of started shifting over to a higher pitch. And all of a sudden, you know, that wasn't going to be for me. I've had this deeper resonance since I was a kid. And so, but I'm able to do, I am definitely called in and able to do a lot of the voices that are, that are monsters and tough chicks and world wrestling girls and the stronger stuff. So I work really hard because usually they're fighters. Well, I would assume like some of the reaction sounds, you'd like feel it in your gut when you're trying to like, you know, just let it out or you're being killed in a certain way or so on and so forth. Yeah. And those particular sessions for um, Diablo, they were that was so much fun being on their campus because they treat you like gold there. And, um, you know, you are you're like the voice star of the day. And even for the kind of incidental work that I was doing, but it was pretty important for them. Every piece and every segment of that was really important. But they were, they worked me. I was pouring some sweat in there, getting my work out. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. You don't actually have to jog every morning. You can just go into the booth. <laughs> yeah, because I jog every morning, every morning <laughs> with two kids. Yeah. So, but, uh, but it was, I mean, it was an amazing time. And I was, it was, we call it a throat ripper. So, you know, it was a throat ripper session, but I was kind of, I'll take it. I want to be in Diablo. Well, I know people nowadays, not only do they schedule that at the end of the week so you can actually take a break on your voice, but there's like some Chinese elixir that voice actors use on their throat. And I'm sure Chris is going to find me the name of it so I don't forget. But it seems like that's the secret now so your voice doesn't go out. 
Yeah, I'm, I have a pretty strong voice and and I definitely work from my gut a lot more. But, you know, I was driving in a cab in New York City about 20 years ago and I didn't have any voice. And this guy goes, you need to chop. <laughs> I shouldn't do the voice. But he's like, you need to chop up ginger and boil it, just raw ginger, boil it and drink it, plug your nose and drink it. And I am telling you, that has been our key. So it is, I mean, it really does coat your throat. It brings your voice right back. Well, I'm going to have to write that down, especially for my mom, because she's a bus driver and she yells at kids all the time. (laughs) (laughs) You in the back. Oh, yeah, it's great. Grant uses it all the time, too. And a lot of people do the neti pot. Oh, is that the one that like goes in your nose? I think. Yeah, that's giving people bugs in their brain. (laughs) Well, if anybody needs to get that uh, image out of their mind, we're going to take a short break here on 91.8 The Fan, but remember to write down that recipe so you don't forget, and keep it tuned to your favorite station where we play everything you want and nothing you don't. Hey, everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan, and you're still in my corner, and so is my special guest. We didn't have to tie her down, which is a plus. (laughs) Oh, yeah. No rope burns for you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm I'm better behaved. Well, one of the things that we talked about behind the scenes, though, is, you know, events where fans can see you. Do you have any for 2013? Or are you still trying to get the name out there to be like, hey, conventions, pick me? Yes, I'm doing that. And, and because Grant and I had little kids, we weren't going down that route, although people were asking us and we just had to say no. But I am, I am just diehard gung-ho and I'm a good talker. I really, like, I really like meeting people, so I can go all day talking with people. And so I'm trying to get more conventions and just open up my possibilities for show. Well, that'll be nice to see you guys up and about. It's kind of entertaining the different places you'll get requests for or the yeah. different places you'll go. It's like, yay, I'm going to Detroit. And it's like, people are like, why are you excited to go to Detroit? I, I was invited. You know, like, <laughs> Yeah, Yuri is in Dubai right now. Oh my gosh! So, yeah, I mean Dubai. I'll take it all. I'll take Cincinnati. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I just want to go out there and have fun. I'm a definite people person. That's that's kind of how I am with conventions. I really love traveling, even if I'm stuck in an airplane for ten hours. Yeah, I don't care. I just it's I don't leave my little hobbit hole, which is my room. So when I get the chance to go to a convention, it's like yes, freedom. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's cool. That's cool. I wish I could just do more and more. I love them. Yeah, it seems like nowadays, once you're in the circuit, it's continuous. You know, more conventions will start to notice you. It's just getting your foot in the door. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Thank you. (laughs) This is my shout out, right? Definitely. Definitely. And, And we just put the word out that we were finally able and ready to do. And we kind of sent it to all the heads of these places around the world. And we got a really good feedback. But I think I or I think what happened is that people had already booked for this year. So mm-hmm. hopefully we'll start picking up more people for the end of the year and and keep going from there. Well, for the listeners out there who want to stalk you in a nice way on the Internet, since they can't see you at any events, uh, do you have social media or a website where they can follow you? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Facebook anytime. And I'm just je- I think I'm. Grabthatvoice.com is my website, grabthatvoice.com, and it has a Facebook like on it. Um, I am, I'm on everything. I, my Twitter is Jessica G, G-E-E, like Lee, but G, V-O, Jessica G, V-O. And was I supposed to say the hashtag in front of that? The, the at symbol, I the think. The at symbol, yeah, at yeah, symbol. I think they'll get that. <laughs> and, and then um, once in a while I blog. So I'm, I'm pretty big on it. I've had to teach my husband how to do that. <laughs> well, it actually, from my experience, it seems like a lot of the guys don't get Twitter. They're they're on Facebook, and a lot of the girls are on Twitter, and not so much Facebook. Yeah, Grant just signed up for Facebook after all these years, and I'm like, you've got to do it. You got to do it. It's a great place to connect with people, and so he's doing it, and he's making great connections. I'm proud of him. He's growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for the listeners out there, are there any projects that you want them to know about? Anything you're working on that you can talk about or anything that recently came out that you want them to know about? 
Yeah. Um, Fire Emblem Awakening. I'm playing a character named Pan, and that is coming out really soon. I think it's all... Uh, it's, it's out. It's out. Yeah, yes. it's out. Good. Thank you. Yeah, you know more than I do. And um, that was really... That was a fun character that I played. And so... She's I'm a big rabbit. Forward. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a chick who turns into a rabbit. And it's it was fun. It was a good... It was a really good, good session. And um, it was really cool because you talk about like digital, the digital direction. We were being directed from some other place in Asia and um, and then had our voice director there and then me in the studio. So we were connected up all the way through and they were listening to it and making sure that we were saying it right. And, you know, and go from there. And of course, Diablo which I, I haven't gotten my fingers on yet, but I definitely, definitely love to to see Diablo 3. Well, they did recently announce that for console as well. I believe PlayStation 4 yeah. was uh, what they announced it for. I'm, I was trying to think. If, I think they're also releasing it on PlayStation 3. So in case people haven't picked it up for PC, there you go. Yeah. And then the other one that I do is Dynasty Warriors. And I, I've been doing that. This is Dynasty Warriors 8. So um, I play a character named Zhu Rong and Zhu Rai Zhu Rong. That's how you remember it. And it is, uh, again, that's another one. I love coming back and, and doing that character because she's just so sassy. So I don't have to do very much. <laughs> well, she seems like a really tough chick. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she is. I mean, she kind of rules the roost, so to speak. So I guess uh, that was typecasting. <laughs> but um, yeah, and she's sexy. Uh, she's sexy as anything. Well, that's always a plus. So I'm hoping yeah. we'll see a cosplay of that soon. <laughs> oh, oh, wouldn't that be cool? But uh, it would probably be X-rated because I don't think she wears very much. <laughs> she she needs some support. Like, that's the really <laughs> funny thing. Just to t talk about outfits for a second is when you have those females out there, like, I don't mind the fantasy of it. I think it's hilarious, but I feel for the cosplayers when they're like, well, where do I put the bra? <laughs> well, yeah, it, exactly. Or how about people who fall in love with the characters? Because that happened with us. We uh, we had a couple of fans who fell in love with our characters on Dynasty, on Dynasty Warriors, and we uh, we were getting calls from them at uh, 5 30 in the morning and six o'clock in the morning and all kinds of stuff we were super nice about it except early but you know they fall in love with your characters so they just want to hear they just want to hear her talk that must be a weird call it's like 5 a.m you think somebody called you for emergency so you're like hello yeah you yeah. kind of you kind of wake up to that and i think we were new parents when that happened or something but you know we handled it it was fine that happens a bit or we'll just, you know, we'll have people show up or whatever. It doesn't matter. If somebody's going to find your phone number, they certainly know how to do it if they're on the computer all day long. Well, for all the listeners out there, please keep your stocking to a minimum. Be nice <laughs> about it. And uh, make sure that you stick to Facebook and Twitter and things like that. Showing up at their door and calling, probably not the best idea. Yeah, because I will definitely write back. I will. Well, it's good to know that you're really into communicating with your fans. And I think they appreciate that, too. Oh yeah, it's, and I'm I'm probably doubly appreciative. So, so <laughs> I always will. Well, since we're nearing the end of our time here on ninety one point eight, the fan, I was wondering if you'd like to participate in a ninety one point eight, the fan tradition. Yes, for sure. Yes. Uh, the problem here is that we ask you to do a radio bump, which doesn't seem so bad, but we do the takes live on air. So if you mess up, everybody hears it. <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I won't mess up. Basically, we ask if you could say, hello, my name is, you insert your name, I do this, you can say you're a voice actress, you can name characters, whatever you want to do, and you're tuned into 91.8, The Fan. So, okay. All right. Hold on. It's okay if you're writing it down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to mess up. I'm not going to make it look bad. Oh, it's okay. We've had plenty of people mess up before. Usually they switch the numbers. That's the, that's usually. You're 91.8 the... the fan. I wrote it a bunch of times. I sent it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, my name is. There you go. I'm ready. Okay. Whenever you're ready, you feel free. Hello, my name is Jessica G, and I am a voice artist in a lot of commercials, cartoons, animation, and uh, video games. And you are tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. That was perfect. See? <laughs>
<laughs> I think you're a pro. I, I really do. Oh, thank you. You should this probably is... do this for a living. I'm just saying. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad I could bump you guys. A yes. bumper. Right. And for any of the listeners out there, do you have any parting words, words of wisdom, dating advice, weather forecasts? <laughs> um, yeah, I always have wisdom um, I, or I always have it. <laughs> I always am opinionated. No, I just want to say thank you because without you, I just I don't know what I would do. I, tr- I truly don't. I am. Uh, I know I've said the word appreciative 15 or 16 times during this during this segment, but I am definitely we are as a husband and wife team and have been for a long time really, really happy with what we do. And we love it and we are definitely able to give it back for anybody who wants to do classes and learn how to do this. Take classes like you were you were talking about before and read some really good books on this. Don't just go out there and and uh, send out your demo tape because that could be detrimental. So um, I'm out here willing and ready to talk to people. Awesome. And it was so lovely to have you on today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And for any of the listeners out there that missed any of this interview, don't fret. You can find it on the website within the next few days. So keep your eyes peeled to 918thefan.com and your ears tuned to 91.8thefan, where we're playing Girls' Generation with their song G. Seems appropriate. So keep it tuned to your favorite station. (laughs) I love that.